Hi everyone, Sid here with a improv journal entry number one officially. Um, and uh, by the way, when uh, with regards to uh, the three entries that I've already got filmed, which for verbal shorthand purposes we'll call the secret entries. Woo. Um, I'm gonna sit on them for a while. Uh, my my main priority right now is catching up on the present moment because, uh, as I mentioned yesterday. Um, as I mentioned yesterday, I have uh, two shows in the uh, down the hatch, if you will, uh, that I wanted to rant on. One of which was uh, with uh, the old troupe uh, that we did last Tuesday at La Belle Improv, or LBI. And honestly, and this is why I am happy to just get these, uh, these posts out there, because uh, this being over a week ago, it's difficult for me to remember the aspects that weren't directly related to me. Uh, and I just so happened to... In my opinion, it was our best performance uh, at that venue. We've, we've been there a couple times before. Uh, and I was uh, really good that night as well. However, uh, there was a stroke of luck and a stroke of... Um, preparedness, uh, which I will get into very shortly. So, uh, the, the, the summary of the set was, um, it was all around, uh, Will and Angela, um, Will was Angela's piano teacher and he initiated by giving this creepy vibe, like, um, which, which he often does. And the, he, he ended up like blowing on her eyes. To, to warm up the hands and shit like that. So I tagged Will out and I uh, initiated the scene with, uh, can you show me on this doll where your uh, piano teacher touched you? And uh, basically making it a, a sexual uh, harassment lawsuit and that kind of thing. And basically the, the theme of dolls was what ended up being important and uh, later on in the set, there was like this um, uh, voodoo, voodoo acupuncturer who would uh, do acupuncture on a voodoo doll and and heal people. And I went back into her um, into her shop as the lawyer from before. Now, here's the thing: in in there are two things in improv that I find consistently uh, produce some of my favorite moments. Uh, one of them is when a person who doesn't know shit about a topic plays a character who's an expert at that topic and basically just has to pull shit facts from out of their ass. And the other one is uh, when there's a genuine miscommunication among players. Uh, there'll be an example of the second one later. So, uh, yeah, I was playing a lawyer character and the... The thing is, as many of you know who've been watching this channel before, uh, for a while, I'm a bit of a legalese geek, uh, which basically means that um, I'm in the worst position to uh, do good improv as a lawyer based on what I just said. So I'm um, in uh, one of the scenes with, uh, with Carlos, uh, who's pretending to be sued, and as I'm talking about how, you know, with my new objection hand, uh, the, the, the judge is gonna be putty in my hands. And then Will hops on stage and says, uh, cut to the trial, right? And here's, here's where um, the stroke of luck and the stroke of uh, preparedness, I guess, uh, combined in that little moment, basically, that set could have been way worse had these two things not happened. So Will um, is playing the, the prosecutor and he goes on this monologue. And me, I'm like, I have, to, um, I have to intervene at some point. So I just picked something uh, that he said and I went, objection. And the thing is, I was going for... Uh, a real objection, like objection leading or objection uh, assuming facts not in evidence or uh, uh, that kind of thing. 
And as I said the word objection, I drew a blank in that moment. So I went, objection, uh, being mean. And uh, obviously that got a laugh. But the thing uh, where the, the, the preparedness uh, came into play was um, I, I was so... Um, my inner legalese geek basically took over and my Sid the improviser was basically on a coffee break during that moment. And what happened was when I was preparing for the case and will cut to the trial, um, my, my legalese geek was like, ooh, a mock trial. And, and I basically forgot the offer that I had just made about how my objection hand is gonna really influence the judge. So when I said, objection, uh, being mean, which in itself was a stroke of luck, uh, will, and he does this a lot, and I fucking love it when he does this. He basically um, coached me from within the scene where he was the judge, and he went, mm, I'm not quite convinced by that objection. I think I'm going to overrule it. And then, basically, he reminded me of my own offer that I had made just before he cut to the trial. And I redid the objection, and I did a little halo around my uh, objection finger and that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, that was, uh, the, the set would have been, uh, way worse had those two things not, um, happened in that short amount of time. And it basically, my, my lawyer character ended up being an important part of that set. Uh, and, and to top it all off, um, at, um, at Comedy Works, there's um, there's a red light that turns on when I think it's at two minutes. So I was fortunate enough to have noticed the red light go on while I was um, off stage watching. I think it was Will and Nazir doing a scene, and I, um, you know, because sometimes the the lights can get cut on you and and you weren't you kind of lose track of time and that kind of stuff. So uh, I see the two minute warning and I knew that like the next big laugh is probably going to end the entire set. So just having that in mind, I was observing. And um, early on in the scene, in the set, I got the idea that it would be funny if, uh, if uh, Will's piano teacher uh, ended up suing uh, the, the little girl. And in the final... Um, what ended up being the final set, uh, the final scene, um, Angela is basically talking to the teacher and she said some comment like, ah, oh, that sounds like some gay ass story. And right there, I, I knew it was like, um, in a hockey metaphor, like the puck was right there in front of the goalie and who was already flat on his back and the defensemen were out of position and all I had to do was fucking skate there and slap it in uh, while well, wrist shot. Anyway, I don't follow hockey. Um, so yeah, when, when um, I knew that uh, the next big laugh would, would probably end the set and I hear Angela tell Will like, that, that sounds like some gay ass story. So then I tagged Angela out and I said to Will, can you show me on this doll where uh, she offended your sexuality, uh, which fortunately enough, the, the tech guy agreed and cut the lights at that moment. And uh, I was really proud. Um, and honestly, it, um, there were a lot of people in that, that audience that I'm glad saw that set. Um, however, it's improv, you know, sometimes the, the stars align and sometimes you roll snake eyes. So, I'm, I'm really glad that I think that set was the closest to our, our true potential as a troupe that I've seen us. Uh, I wish I had filmed this sooner so that I could have more general um, uh, things to record besides how awesome I was that set, but it wasn't entirely me. Um, there's a huge assist on, uh, on uh, Will's part for that. So, uh, besides that, I think I will um, do the other entry for the, the Nuit Blanche, which really I don't have that much to say about it, but I do want to uh, share an anecdote that happened that night. Uh, as I mentioned yesterday, it was like um, from 8 
p.m. to 4 a.m. that it ended up happening, which is a lot. I don't feel like doing the math in my head right now. That's how tired I am. Um, but, and the reason I don't have that much to say about it is because when, when I go to a workshop or I do a show, uh, I see those as teaching opportunities and I really focus on um, being teachable. Uh, is As a matter of fact, I think that that mindset had a bunch to do with why I gained so much skill so quickly. I, you know, I have a lot to learn, obviously. I, I'm what I call, uh, I, the term I like to use to describe myself as far as improv skills is, um, I, what was it? An advanced novice or something like that. So, uh, yeah, the, the two main things that I would say uh, have really helped me uh, grow as an improviser so quickly is, first of all, I have a lot of relevant experience that I could just leverage in there. Like I was in, in Toastmasters for many years. Uh, I was a content creator online for, for a while, both uh, this channel and uh, the, the Gaming and Liberty podcast, uh, which is, I, I think, soon to be officially defunct. I'm not paying for uh, to renew uh, the hosting for that. Um, and... Yeah, the other thing is um, the obsession, and, and when I go to a workshop in particular, this is the mindset that I, that I keep in my mind, it's I will be the most coachable person in that room. And, and I think that no matter what uh, field you look at, the, the best people are usually the most coachable. Now, contrast that to Saturday night, which I basically just saw as a party. Uh, we were just there to like, you know, do what we love all night and uh, see how long we can stand up, which is why I don't have that many notes. However, uh, there was a, um, uh, a really cool moment that I will use to um, illustrate uh, the, the concept that I mentioned earlier, how some of my favorite improv moments happen when there's a genuine miscommunication between players. So I was in a scene with um, Carlos and two, um, two French players from Monday Nights. And uh, Carlos is in uh, my troupe, so I've played with him many times. Um, and we were doing that game where one person does the arms for the other person. And I was Carlos's arms. Now, I've, I've played this game a couple times, both as arms and as the person uh, speaking. And... W as a matter of fact, I had played that game earlier uh, that night uh, where someone else was my arms, Angela. And so, yeah, the, we, we're, we get our suggestion. I forget what it was. It doesn't matter. And as soon as the lights cut, I was like, you know what? I'm chopping carrots. I don't give a shit. That's what I'm starting the scene with, with object work. So as soon as the lights cut, I won't do the whole mime here because I'm driving, but I start chopping carrots like this and Carlos had also made a decision and as soon as the lights come up Carlos initiates the scene with oh we're finally here at Ikea now I hear him say this and I'm like fuck it I'm not stopping uh, everyone's seen me do this uh, he's gonna have to figure it out and when, um, when he realized that he was, he was chopping carrots, uh, he, he kind of said, oh yeah, we work at the kitchen at Ikea. And the scene grew from there and ended up being a, a really cool scene. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a, a nice illustration of two things actually. First of all, how uh, miscommunication can produce really great improv moments and also um, the concept of weaving it into a larger pattern uh, that's uh, a concept that I picked up I think it was truth in comedy I forget who the the the, the authors were but basically if you manage to weave it up into a larger pattern there is no there are no mistakes in improv uh, except maybe you know uh, the basics like blocking and like not agreeing on what reality actually is unless that's the purposes of your scene but I digress um, the, the bottom line is 
you can weave it into a larger pattern and if you can figure out how to weave your mistake into a larger pattern uh, then it doesn't become a mistake at all and it becomes one of the stitches in this improv tapestry genius so on that note I think I will wrap it up thank you very much for watching um, I have a show tonight so there might be another one of these tomorrow uh, and then then we'll see what happens uh, again I the 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 rants on whatever's on my mind aren't gonna stop uh, but as you can see I have many opportunities to film entries in this journal uh, and I'm really glad that I um, took the decision to film these and as I said um, if I end up keeping these private I'm, I'm filming these anyway so please let me know your thoughts below uh, if you found this video by looking for improv videos or if you're one of my um, uh, old-time subscribers uh, please let me know what you think of these videos and uh, as always like share subscribe to my YouTube channel that would be so awesome and on that note I will see you soon take care